I, it wasn't appropriate for me to be at the table at that point. Yeah, I, wasn't yeah, I can use my notes. Yeah, okay, here we go. Uh, I'd like to call the uh, Board of Selectmen uh, Departmental Workshop uh, meeting for um, is it Wednesday? Yeah, Wednesday, January 17th. To order. Um, first presentation today, uh, and by the way, welcome to the, uh, the Board of Finance members. Uh, this is a long-standing tradition where uh, you guys are uh, the board is actively involved in uh, the development of these budgets. Uh, this is the first where uh, this is the uh, the first cut from the department heads, and as uh, history as any indicator, you will be uh, prepared with questions and uh, uh, dig down deeply on this. So, uh, Rob uh, McCool uh, with the library, up first. Good morning, Rob. You said library? Library, yes. Uh, this is briefly before I talk about the increase. I'd like to just mention that our salary uh, line is down 25900 this year. Now, the negotiated raise is certainly going to eat up a large portion of that, but I think ultimately we're going to be able to be flat. Um, a good chunk of that's to do with uh, my predecessor who retired at a significantly higher <laughs> wage than I did. But, um, <laughs> so and hopefully yes. that is going to make uh, the increase that right here. Come under. <laughs> Rob, let me interrupt you for one second. We just addressed everybody about salaries, um, everyone's salaries. When you look at the salary sheets, uh, they are not going to include any increases for the GEA, which is a lot of the – most of the departments have someone from the GE Guilford Employee Association. Uh, we've just settled that contract. It has not yet been signed. We, we have money in reserve for personnel to account for that. But so a lot of your salary budgets are going to show low amounts, if not zeros, in a lot of places because of that. Money's reserved elsewhere, and we will make the adjustments when, when those when that's settled. Uh, the same is going to be true for the fire department. Although the fire department, I don't expect to be settled in time for this budget process. But the GEA ones, we're going to try to make adjustments to, or at least let you know what they are. And update the sheets. And we'll update the sheets. So depending on when we get this done in the process, so I'll talk to you about whether it makes sense to do it or not. We probably will, though. Oh, I think it makes sense to do it in the sheets. Yes. Yeah. Uh, okay. Because then we'll we'll do that then. Good. Okay. So that really, everything is essentially flat this year. The only real difference is I am asking for an increase of uh, six thousand eight hundred and thirty dollars in the uh, maintenance line of the budget. Uh, that's really all to do with the fact that the building is coming up on 10 years. Um, some things that we were able to do intermittently, we now have to do uh, annually. So uh, it's 1,000 of that is for an annual in, um, inspection of the fire alarm, which we had done, but not annually. Um, $500 for a regular inspection of the sprinkler system. And then um, we had an increase of about $6,000 over the last 12 months on maintenance costs, primarily due to repairs for the HVAC system. Now, I'm not an expert on it, but my impression is that having fixed one or two of these units, having six of them, the same problems will probably emerge in the other ones eventually. So I'm just assuming that's going to reoccur, although we seem good for now. We got through the cold snap without any issues. Um, most of the repairs happened in November, early December. Uh, there was also an increase in the fees. Uh, we are part of a library consortium called Libraries Online. Um, the state library, as with many other things involving the state, has been in a lot of trouble in the last couple of years, and that uh, drastically affected our delivery service. So within our consortium of Libraries Online, we were able to solve this problem and get our service level back to what it once was before the state ran into trouble. Um, that's going to lead to a $4,500 increase in our line fees. Now, I've, I've pretty much been able to defray those costs um, due to the GLA and the friends, so I'm not directly loading that into what I'm asking for the town. I just want to point out that the $6,800 increase that I'm asking of the town is really only a fraction of the maintenance operating costs that are going to increase at the library overall. And that's really to do with the building. You're referring to the slate roof that eventually will... That actually oh, we're putting off for a while. We're not going to keep, yeah, years out. right. That's five years out, and that was in the capital yeah, budget. Capital. Capital. Yeah. Any questions, Rob? Is that it? Yeah, everything else is really. Um, again, I'd like to always point out that our, we're only asking twenty five hundred dollars for books. Um, that really covers our newspaper subscriptions, basically. So uh, we try our best to um, defray costs through the friends. 
through the Guilford Library Association fundraising um, as best we can. We asked the least possible from the town. Is there any change in the number of employees? No change in the overall number. Um, we haven't quite mapped out the succession when Sandy left, but it's going to be essentially the same. Yeah. Rob, the electronic material has been uh, <coughs> relative, been flat for several years now. Um, any, there's nothing new coming down the There is. Um, we're, we're, we just got a new um, subscription service called Hoopla last year, which we had the friends pay for. We're looking into a couple other uh, streaming services. So I would like to increase that. I was a little reluctant to do it this year with the um, increase in the um, maintenance costs. But I think down the line, um, as that becomes more and more of a part of our services, we're seeing a slight decrease in print and traditional circulation, but we're definitely seeing an increase that's been steady in electronic circulation. So when we first, say 10 years ago, introduced eBooks, that constituted about 1% of our circulation. Now it constitutes 10% of our circulation. So that's going to be something we're going to be looking at more and more closely. Um, we're always looking at new services in that regard. Okay. Rob, you've mentioned uh, friends a couple of times, friends of the library a couple of times. Um, just for those out in the audience uh, and maybe some new board members, what percentage of your overall operating budget comes from the friends? How, how, how substantial is that support that you get from them? Well, it's really just the materials. Um, so in terms of the materials, the book budget is probably 50%, I'd say at least. Um, okay. May perhaps even a little more, and, and like um, sort of initiative. It's like when we offer a piece of technology, like we're about to offer virtual reality goggles as a public um, offering. Stuff like that comes always from the friends. So it's usually 50% of the materials budget at least, and then um, any new initiatives as well, and a, a pretty sizable portion of the programming budget as well. Just like other departments, though, the friends are like the booster club oh, yeah. of the library. Mm -hmm. So they 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 raise a very large portion of funds to promote the library, but the, the, the um, library board and, and the director don't put those funds into the operating <laughs> budget because if there was a hurricane on the book sale weekend, the bottom line from the friends would be very different one year to the next, but they are very uh, generous. And we always say w that if the friends go away, the library would be there, but it wouldn't be the library right. that we have. No. No. Yes. Mary Jane. Oh, go ahead. I, I was just going to um, note for the board, uh, this particular budget has utility costs in it, as do many of them. Yeah. Uh, Eversource, you may have heard, is going uh, looking for a large rate increase, could be as high as 14 percent. Um, in discussions with our consultants and um, with Matt, we, we chose to put an incremental increase um, in the budgets relative to what we have done in the past. However, um, if something were to happen when they go through that rate increase, some of the utility lines may need to be adjusted <coughs> moving forward. What assumption did you make? Uh, Two percent. Last year we did 1.14. Uh, we were told to do somewhere between one and three uh, by our consultants, so we, we chose two. So it's a little bit more, and actually the 1.4 last year was a a little bit um, higher than, than what actually came. So the, the budgets are making some sort of adjustment for an increase in Eversource, hopefully enough, but possibly not enough. So any any um, of the budgets that have utilities would have that same thing, so um, just to make you aware. So that's going to affect the assumptions in the energy performance contract as well? No. No. That's it's a now. pretty sizable increase, though, right? Um, Fourteen percent. That's a that's a preliminary rate request that'll probably be spread over several years. Uh, it's typically the way Pure uh, handles those. Oh, I thought it was an annual increase. No. Okay. Can you talk about the association dues? There's a there's a decrease. Sure. Uh, Thirty-one thousand. That was probably the best year on record. Um, that was that number was upgraded slightly. I, we used to ask for about 29. That was the, the assumption. Um, I don't like to always sort of bet on the record-breaking year every year, uh, so I went with 30,000. Is this a sort of a, I feel I think that's a fairly safe <coughs> assumption for what the board's going to bring in this year. How much is the uh, Friends of the Library contributing annually? Um, let's grab it. I know we're at about 85,000, um, which is broken down into various categories. It's about 51,000 of the book budget, which again is more than half. Um, 16,000 for programming, which is the vast majority of our programming budget. 
um, a little for staff development, and ten thousand dollars for technology, which is the technology I spoke of, which is the, the sort of the unique initiative that's over. A total above. about eighty-one thousand. Eighty-five thousand. Yes. Which is amazing. I mean, that's that's, and that's, a, that's the best year of all, of all time. I don't think that like that's a normal year. That's record-breaking year. Um, yeah. Amazing. Yes. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, I told them they're they're too big to fail now. It's, it's become too much harder. Any other questions? No? Rob, thank you very much. Thank you very much. Thanks, Rob. <coughs> All right. Parking wreck in at 9. Uh, if we can get. So we got 15 months. Anybody have any stories to tell? <laughs> Not, that. <laughs> Not that's PG rated. That rate increase for Eversource, they're talking about it in May? We'll know in May what it yes. is? Yeah, yeah the hearings are in May. Yeah. Yeah. They have to have one, one more thing that's like having a crystal ball to try to figure out uh, uh, mm, yeah. what we're working with. Yeah. <coughs> yeah. Maybe all backed up. Like, yeah. 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 I better have one person wait. They should be here 15 minutes yeah. early anyway. Yeah. So yeah, yes, nice. probably. Maybe Thank you. Yeah. Yeah. Handouts? Hey there. How are you? Oh, okay. Parking next. Yeah. 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 There's a schedule. Of course. Of course. Go get the coffee. Are we ready? Thanks. Yeah, those have the holes so you can put it in the front. Thank you. Thank you. Hey Jay, how's it going? Yeah, how's it going with you? Good, good, crazy. Yeah, it's good. You. I know, I can barely tell you we're wet, <laughs> for starters. I'm barely coming up here. I'm over here sending myself emails. What is it? Holding you up. Just, just work. Beginning of the year. Come out of the gate. Busy. Yeah, mm -hmm. in the select and switch. That's fine. <coughs> this thing is revelation. What's that? Isn't it? See, you're used to it. You've got that big board. Yeah, please pause. Yeah. I have, I have uh, ahead of schedule. Let's hope we can stay that way. Uh, Park and Rex, uh, Rick and Rose, want to give us a summary of uh, the highlights of your budget, please? Sure. Good morning. Um, Good morning. I'm going to just give a brief, brief, brief overview because I know there's a lot of new people that may not know everything that we, that we do and just kind of touch on those. And first, appreciate the past, we appreciate the past support that the Board of Selectmen and Board of Finance have given us to give us a budget that allows us to meet the uh, recreational needs and demands of the community. Um, uh, we have over thousand, uh, over close to 20,000 people that participate in our programs and special events. Um, we uh, maintain over 100 acres of grass, uh, up to 40 ball fields, three beaches, the green, tennis and basketball courts, uh, three playgrounds, skate park, and we help preferably with the dog park. Pretty much that's volunteer effort, but we do a little assistance there. <clears throat> in the win winter, we remove snow from, not today, but um, snow from uh, over two miles of sidewalks and uh, any town parking lot. Uh, we help with uh, one or two of our guys usually go out and help the public works crew out on the roads. Uh, and then when, when conditions allow, we remove snow from Mill Pond also for ice skating. We did have four days this year until we had that big snow snow. Um, we have over 600 classes uh, throughout the year. Um, and we assist with other town-wide events like the Memorial Day Parade. We, you know, provide the showmobile and can set that up for, for Larry there. And um, the Christmas tree lighting and the town cleanup day, which we actually oversee now. It was a volunteer effort in the past. Rotary did for a little while, and, and now it's, it's our department is running the town cleanup day. So those are some, you know, obviously the fireworks we do and other big special events. So a few of the highlights. Um, we have 11 accounts. We have about 22 different accounts. 11 of them have a zero or increase or decrease. Um, uh, utilities, we decreased uh, somewhat because electric rate uh, reduction, that's some information we got from uh, Mary Jane, so we dropped that down a little bit. Um, we do have an increase in overtime, and that's based on 
uh, a few years of, of actual history of overtime, and the wages are going up. You know, the, the GA has been under negotiation for a couple of years now, and those numbers are going up. So we've we've had to increase the uh, the overtime account. Um, fuel has increased uh, because of new gas prices, and so what I did is I took the actual uh, number of gallons of, of gas and diesel that we got from Public Works. They gave us the number of gallons we actually used last year multiplied by what the new rate is, and that's the new number. Um, the uh, grounds maintenance uh, increased uh, by about $5,000, and most of that is, is uh, because of um, more mulch we need for playgrounds uh, for safety issues. Um, we, we've got to get more stone for the parking lots, especially at Jacobs Beach and Chittenden Park. The potholes are just getting really bad down there. And we got those beautiful facilities. We've got to, we've got to improve the parking lot. Um, and then uh, field maintenance has gone up um, almost $11,000. Uh, and that's generated by the co increased cost of field marking paint. That's about a $1,000 increase there. Top dressing materials is about $2,000. Um, part of that is because for about 10 years we had loam that we had gotten from the high school project when the, uh, the stadium field was redone from grass to synthetic curve. We stockpiled down at Peddler's Park um, uh, the loam, and we had that for about 10 years. It's gone now. We've used it. So now we gotta, we got to buy it. Um, and we do have to chop to, you know, many of our fields uh, every year, um, or we alternate certain fields. And then the other uh, increase there is for um, seed and fertilizer. That's gone up by almost $5,000, and the reason for that is that the two upper fields at Cox are back online. We, if I look back over our budget last year, we dropped that line item by about three thousand dollars because we weren't we knew we weren't going to be seeding and fertilizing those two fields. They're back online, so we had to put it back in. So th those are the reasons for the increase on the field maintenance. And then we also have contracted services. Um, uh, we contract out so, some of the aeration. We do some ourselves, but deep, tiny aeration where we have to get down deeper into the soil uh, to get air movement in there. We have to contract that out. Um, and uh, let's see. So you know, the other one really uh, is uh, equipment maintenance. Uh, that's up by about ten thousand dollars, and that's because of aging equipment. I looked back over three years. Our uh, actual um, in sixteen and seventeen was thirty six thousand. Uh, fourteen fifteen was forty eight thousand, and thirteen fourteen was forty three thousand. So we were we were low last year, and we were well over budget, uh, and probably will be this year. So um, we were putting in, uh, we had 30000 we're asking for 40000 this year. Um, and then we also, along with that, though, we have the, uh, the transportation grant. And I think, Matt, you recently signed that, that one. Um, there are two different. One is a, a grant for purchasing a, a new bus, but then we have a $44,000 grant that we get that we can apply toward bus drivers, some of the maintenance uh, of the buses, um, and uh, part of that goes to uh, Patty's salary. Uh, in the office, so that gets divvied up three or, three or four different ways. Um, so the bottom line is it's about a, uh, and this does not include salary increases because that's in Mitch's budget for the, the GEA, and um, it, so it's about $41,000 is the increase, uh, 42000 I guess, uh, which is about 3%. It's roughly the same, same amount we asked for last year, and we, we clearly do a zero base budget. We don't look at something and say, okay, let's just add Five percent to this, um, we actually look at every line item, whether it's clay, fertilizer, seed, um, lime, you know, ice melt, whatever. We look at what our actual expenditures were the year before, and are we looking at doing the same thing, or do we have to increase this somewhere? Like I mentioned, this fertilizer and seed, we dropped it last year because we had two less fields. So those are back online, so we had to bring it back up. Uh, questions? Yep. So, Rick, yesterday uh, we had a presentation <coughs> regarding the concept of um, <coughs> the town adopting an ordinance to ban fracking waste, and one of the potential uses that was represented as a, a possible um, Trojan horse almost uh, for this material would be in materials such as processed stone, road material, and mulch. I mean, when you get contracts now for this material, is there a representation as to where this is sourced and, and what it contains? Well, well, the mulch, mulch has to be certified. It's got to be a playground certified mulch that we use for playgrounds. It's a special I, IPEMA, I forgot what that stands for, but it's an international one, some, some uh, standard. Um, so, so, so explain that. So, what, so that you actually get a, a 
statement, a certification yes, from the supplier? Yes, for we do, yes. Okay, yeah. that's good. Yeah. So what about the process stone? And process stone, and uh, we just get it from Tilcon. Yeah, it's usually uh, like three-quarter inch process. Okay. And, and the for assumption the is they're just, you know, they're up there grinding it out of the hill in North Brantford. Right. right. And where else comes from North Brantford, I and mean, that's where we get it from that location. Right. The implication from the presentation was, though, that these companies would, would sell byproduct to sort of supplement that to the contractor, and, and it would sort of find its way into the town surreptitiously. So have yeah. you have you encountered that at all? I Is there any buzz that, in no. the in no. the uh, procurement pipeline? No, and, it, and it's I mean it's minimum minimal dollars really we spend on that is maybe a thousand two thousand dollars. You know, it's not not been a big chunk of our budget okay. in the past. Um, and I think we just use them because that's you know what public works has used, and we just get the same stuff. <coughs> okay. So then I have another question, different line. The vehicle maintenance also reflective of yesterday. So we approved two trucks. Right. Um, and so, what percentage of, of your the increase in maintenance was related to the older trucks that, that are being replaced? Well, one of them probably not at all because one of them, the range of replacing, was really out of service by a year anyway. We weren't even using it. Okay, it just was dead. Yeah. yeah. Um, the other one, uh, was a, I think it's a uh, number fifty-nine. I forgot. It's a two thousand two. I forgot what year it is off the top of my head, but. Um, uh, yeah, you know, a percent of it. I couldn't give you a percent, Lou. I mean, I'd have to go back over reports to see how much was actually put into that truck. I know we put a new body on it uh, a few years ago, and it was like about six or eight thousand um, dollars. It's just, you know, stuff. Things happen. Our mowers are old. Uh, you know, I think we have in our capital for next year, I believe, um, replacing one of our big mowers, mm -hmm. uh, the big sixteen-foot mowers. Um, and those things are in opera. All of our mowers in operation from. Mm, early to mid-April until early November, and they're out every day of the week, and uh, they just get they get abused. I don't want to say abused; they get used. <laughs> they're just wear and tear. Yeah, yeah. yeah. <clears throat> okay, but thanks. Do you use them for the schools at all? We do all the athletic fields, but not the immediate not areas the, around the schools. Not the immediate. Correct. Like uh, parking lots, islands, whatever the school system does. Those we just we do all the fields. Yeah. At your cost. Yes. Yeah. Nothing's charged back. Could you comment on the overtime line? Why, what's uh, causing us to increase that? Well, snowstorms, uh, for sure, is, is the biggest cause um, um, in the, um, that's the biggest biggest one. It, it, occasionally in the summer, spring, if we're, we're running into a real spell of wet weather and the guys can't get out and mow, when it gets dry, they got to get out and do it. So they may have to stay till five, five o'clock or six in some of the fields to get it done. It's dependent on it's all, the weather. It's all weather related. I, all of it's weather related. Yes. Okay. Yeah. Other questions? Um, this is a, more of a general question regarding fuel. We're, we went out to bid. What is the bid contract dates? I mean, the fuel numbers that we're using, are they in our current bid? And when do we go out again? <coughs> uh, we go out on an annual basis. Okay, so is what's being used in the budget? The, the budget for the next fiscal year. Okay, so these the, you're pretty confident in these numbers? We're Locked not, in prices. Yeah. We, are not, we right. went out to bid in December. Mm -hmm. We went out to bid in December. Okay. Most yeah. So it's fresh. So yeah. it's fresh. Right. Okay. The, so only, the only thing that might change is, is usage. Yeah. You know, usage might go up and down, but the, the cost is, okay. is set. So we're seeing a 41% increase or so in diesel across the board for the whole town? Uh, I don't remember what the exact uh, percentage was. I have to okay. We can get that, numbers. Jonathan. But this is a combination of uh, usage and price. Oh, okay. I thought you took the gallons from last year. Right. I did. Okay. Yes. So it's pretty reflective the of the new increase right. in fuel yeah. then, huh? Okay. It just, it's a pretty you big it's increase. It's actual yeah. usage, yeah. so it might be not exactly the budget amount from, from the current oh, okay. year, so used actual. Gotcha. Right. So that could fluctuate the number I see what you mean. Well, yep. Mm -hmm. yeah. I have a question, if I may, about sure, uh, fuel maintenance, where it, which is a line that does have a, an increase, a significant increase. If you look back to the earliest year presented, which is 2015-16, that line is, is mu so much lower, 56000 that year, compared to 87000 for the budget three years later. You, it's, a, it's a random question, and you may not have an answer at your fingertips, but I'm wondering why it was so low that year, if it was something 
unusual, or if this is really just the term? Are you looking at the request or the actual? I'm looking at the actual for 1516, which was 56,000. And it just seems to be a steady high rate of growth. Yeah, well, I mean, there's some years that um, we maybe, again, time-wise, maybe we didn't get to do all the fertilization we wanted to do. Mm -hmm. um, there are some years that every department was asked to hold back, you know, because of the, the budget They're situation, and so there's some things we didn't do for that reason. Mm -hmm. um, but um, our fields get a lot of use, you know. And here's, here's an important thing to, to remember is, or to point out is that, for example, Little League doesn't end June 20th anymore. Mm -hmm. It used to. Mm -hmm. and, and now it ends around October 28th. And so it used to be we had the fall where we didn't have to fertilize or do anything on the fields. We, they could rest and recuperate, you know, for the next year. Mm -hmm. uh, and that's when we would do a lot of work on those fields to get them ready for the spring. And now they're playing until really almost early November. Soccer is until about November 18th. Mm -hmm. um, the only thing that we're, we're, so far we're thankful that lacrosse has not gone year-round yet. I mean, they're, yeah. they're pretty good about not playing in the fall. They might have some clinics here and there, but um, they, their main base is uh, the front field at um, Long Hill Park for the girls and uh, Nut Plains Park. And Nut Plains doesn't have irrigation, so we're, we're, we're glad that they're kind of staying off that field in the fall, so it gives us a chance to really get in there aerate, top dress, seed, you know, get it ready for the next spring again. Mm -hmm. um, and so um, these, these sports are, are, are um, they're, they're not year-round, but they're going much longer into the season, and so that drives up the cost of us having to maintain the fields. Thank you. <clears throat> on the salaries, I know we're, we're going to get specifics later on from Mitch and everything, but I just want to double-check on the trend of uh, full-time versus part-time salaries. Is there any change in numbers of either of those categories? Part-time went down a little bit. Um, we because, dollars, I mean people. Uh, not people. It went down in dollars because, you know, maybe somebody moved on or whatever and got somebody new in, so they're, they're, it's a lower rate. So, so the down number on. of part-time employees is fairly constant and also full-time employees? Yeah, it's constant, yes. Yeah. Rick and maybe Mary Jane, can I ask you a little bit about copier and lease supply? I, it's been, been a while since my last go-around. Is this one big copier lease for the whole town? Uh, correct. And uh, last year, we went back out to bid for a, a five-year lease, so these are current prices for the next few years. So we're going to see approximately a 16% decrease in copier costs across all the departments? Um, Depending on what was budgeted last year for for usage, it's possible that you could see them down. But last year would have been the first year. So the year we're in, 1718 was the first year of the new contract, so it would have been reflective already. So budget to budget last year to this year, you shouldn't see a big shift. All right. Unless That's a little bit of good news. A change in better, better leasing terms. Mm -hmm. um, Rick, I did want to go back to vehicle maintenance. It's going up pretty substantially, 33%. 30, what, what is driving that? Do we have more vehicles or average age? Or it's, it's, age it's the age. Cost? It's the age. And again, well, as I, I kind of mentioned, John, I, said, I looked at the, the real history. Um, <clears throat> we budgeted, uh, I think, 24596 20, 20, 2016, 17. Our actual was over $36,000. 2014, 15, it was $48,000 almost 49,000, 2013, 14 is 43,000. So we, we really weren't budgeting enough and we were in an over budget. So I think we're trying to be more realistic and what, what do we think we're gonna really spend? Okay, understood. That one's, that one's definitely always a guess, you know, you don't know. You, know, you, hope, you hope your vehicles are gonna be okay, you don't have, but something breaks down and you gotta, maybe you're, you know, you're plowing a road and the plow breaks or, um, you know, snowblower, um, you know, things happen. And, okay. you know, so we have to have a number in there, uh, and, and it's our best estimate of what we think we're going to need. Maybe one more question. Not a big dollar amount, but it uh, just happened to be the line that I think increased the most for health and welfare. I was just curious what yeah, was driving good, that increase. Good, good point. I forgot to mention that one. That one is, um, it used to be, years ago, it was only uh, for hepatitis B vaccine. That we, by law, we had to offer to all of our camp and staff and aquatic staff. Most of them didn't take it, but we had to, we had to offer it, and so it was in there. But now, um, uh, with Mitch, we have every new employee has to go through an HPE, Human Performance Evaluation, in certain categories, like um, 
not lifeguards, but custodians. Or, yeah, and you, physical labor jobs. And so if we have a, some turnover in staff, we have to send them to get that test. We have to pay for it. In addition to that, uh, all of our bus drivers uh, have to be drug tested. And if they're a new employee, they get pre-employment tested. And then they're on a random draw where they get randomly, the company will call us and say, okay, send so-and-so, you know, next week. And um, we, we have to pay for that. And so those are, uh, numbers are up for those reasons. Okay. Thank you. Rick, I want to go back to vehicle maintenance. Uh, one of the, the benefits of these devices is we can immediately pull up uh, information from last night's Board of Finance packet, as well as the uh, uh, Board of Selectmen's expense for <coughs> December. Um, you're currently overdrawn in your vehicle maintenance account. So you had 30000 budget. You're currently at thirty two eight. Right. Uh, so you're almost 10% over. Yeah. Uh, my question is, is the 40 enough? That's a good question. That's a good question. Well, I think part I of the answer to that, Matt, is that we – that forty-four thousand dollar grant that we have, right. some of that can go toward bus maintenance. Yeah. So we can't put it toward a plow or you know or a mower or something. But if it's some maintenance on the bus, and, and we do document, you know, we keep pretty or t uh, we uh, Ralph keeps pretty good records of every piece of equipment. And so we can go back and say, okay, we spent you know twelve thousand dollars fixing a couple of buses. We can take that money from the grant and put it toward that. Is that grant the only offset revenue offset that you have against your operating budget, as opposed to it going into program reimbursables? It's Are there other grants that you have access to that offset costs? That's the only grant. Does that grant go? How do we deal with that grant directly? Uh, debit against their account? Correct. Towards the end of the year, right, we right. Um, analyze that and uh, work up the numbers that we should transfer into. The All right. So we realistically, we should be looking at the. Uh, the, the increase in light of a $44,000 uh, grant that subsidizes these operations. We, we include that in here. That is, that's already built in? <clears throat> the 44000 is built into your cost estimate? It, it is. Like, for example, um, you don't get those to pay salary. It's not just this one line item. Yes. Right. Yeah. Right. So, so in, in the uh, bus drivers, we have $41,000 for bus drivers, and I put a note, $21,656 of that charge to, the, charge to the grant. So that's a net number. The salary number for bus drivers is a net number uh, accommodating the grant? You, you see it right in the sheet. It's a net number. It's the last line on the full-time okay. and the part-time. You mm -hmm. split up the grant certain, certain ways. That's how you split it up. Yeah. Okay. 8094 against his full-time salaries and 21656 he just mentioned against his part-time salaries. Spacey for the bus drivers. If I could yeah. suggest for the future, I think it would be yeah. helpful for us to show it as a net at the bottom as the theme of the is shown. It would help explain the trends right. better. Exactly. I can't help just beating up a little bit on vehicle maintenance. <coughs> I remember sitting here maybe three years ago when I uh, sat on the board before and they explained that some of the new vehicles were costing more to maintain than the older vehicles, which was counterintuitive but uh, to some degree true because of the electronics and the more expensive parts. Um, but I thought over the years we've been making a lot of efforts with pay-as-you-go to really replace our aging inventory of vehicles. And I'm, I'm always kind of surprised that vehicle maintenance keeps climbing and by substantial amounts. And are we keeping any statistics of the average age of our vehicles? or Do we, do we really know? Well, I, I think our goal is in like 15 years and we're trying to, you know, to uh, replace them. Um, and if you look at our five-year plan, that's pretty much what we're looking to do, give or take a year or so. Um, but, but one thing that we have done with the lead of Public Works is, is we're specking out as the, the, the uh, dump truck that you folks just approved yesterday as a, a stainless steel bot, um, bed. And uh, we used to have that. And, we, and it would last about uh, eight or ten years and we had to replace them. As I mentioned, that one of the vehicles that we're going to replace um, that we want to replace, we, ju we replaced the bed on that. And I, I can't remember the exact cost, was somewhere between eight and ten thousand dollars, I think. But now it's stainless steel, it should definitely last as long as we have that truck. So that, that's an eight or ten thousand dollar cost we're not going to have to incur anymore. In those yep. and, and Rick, you know, here you are, the first one of the first departments reporting mm -hmm. some vehicle maintenance, so you're, you know, you're getting the brunt of it. But I just, I, I'm talking generally, you know, I see vehicle but maintenance see, costs go up, and I thought we were reducing the average age of our. But I think Parks and Rec is the last stop for some of the town vehicles. We, mm -hmm. we sort of pa pass down exactly. vehicles that have already been used in other departments, sure. you know, they get. So they're using used vehicles. Mm -hmm. 
And, and we're gradually replacing those with the new ones now. Yeah. That's, that's correct. Yeah. And, and you do in your capital budget have, you mentioned the, the 16 foot mower, right? The mm -hmm. Jacobson mower. It's $110,000, it by the way. Right. But that's in your capital request for 2018 19. Right. Also, the dump, another dump truck, another $88,000. Am I reading that right? Also for yeah. next year? Yeah. 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 So, Two it's a good question. Um, but there's there's a, there's a plan to kind of keep the equipment current. Fifteen years is pretty much the number we've been looking at, trying to. You know, I mean, we have other vehicles. Um, we want it's a 2001, so it's 17 years now. Uh, and, you know, it's riding out in the bottom, and I mean, it's one of those. Pretty soon, it's going to be a Flintstone mobile. <laughs> you can switch your feet down to stop or to brake, sort of through the holes in the floor. Um, but. Um, we do have a plan to try to, 15 years is pretty much the number we're looking at for most of those vehicles for replacement. Okay. Can I ask a question about the building maintenance? Um, I don't think we, but we've been talking about vehicle maintenance, I don't think building maintenance we talked about, but to the same vein that Matt just brought up about the trending of this year, building maintenance is over, it's right now sitting with encumbrances 122%. And you're asking for about the same much. You only have a 1.2 percent increase in building maintenance. What made it jump this year, and why not go up more on building maintenance for the next coming budget? There were a couple uh, major things that happened. Um, we had to replace the backflow preventer. Um, that was a couple thousand dollars. Uh, it was uh, not certified by the water company to come and test it, you know, every periodically. And uh, there was a problem with it, so we had to replace that. Um, the um, rear uh, electric door that goes out, to, you know, off the back, uh, the automatic door, uh, the motor was shot on that. It was about $1,500, I think. Uh, we had some septic problems. Um, uh, it wasn't, the tank wasn't pumping properly. And I think we spent, boy, I think it was close to five or $6,000 repairing that. So those are un unexpected expenses that came up. We did have, um, uh, in our budget this year, we had done a uh, Collier's report. Collier's a company out of uh, Madison, and um, they did a, a facility assessment review for us to plan future budgets. Um, this budget we worked on before we got that report back, you know, but now that we have it, no, I'm sorry, we did get it back for, and a lot of the capital stuff we put into our capital budget three or four years down the road are based on their recommendations. A lot of HVAC stuff is in there, uh, replacing windows, energy efficiency uh, type things. Um, and um, they looked at everything from the carpets to the roof. And the roof is uh, due for replacement, you know, as you know, we're in discussion right now with uh, a contractor or a uh, um, design company to do the replacement on the roof. So um, we have that study now, and now it, some of it is maintenance items, some of it is, is capital expenditures. And so we'll be going through those. Uh, we just got it. Commission hasn't even seen the whole report yet. We got it, I think, after the last meeting we had. Um, and so um, the final report. We had a few recommendations we got that we put into the capital, but now we got the whole report. I'll be looking at everything for that building. So to, to answer your long answer your question, is there were some some big expenses this year? Do you still feel comfortable with the number that you've got now? Assuming with our fingers that, crossed, that number is assuming no on unforeseen conditions, which happened this year. Yeah, it is. It is. Okay. Um, yeah, I mean, I think our, our actual for 16, 17 was uh, uh, just under 66,000. So we were, we were off, uh, our, we were budgeted 60,000 that year, just about 59,500. Mm -hmm. So we were up a little bit. Um, you know, this year is definitely, I think it's an, an anomaly because of all those things that just unexpected things that came up. Building uh, Monday was our 25th anniversary of moving into the building. We moved in uh, January 15, 1993. And so we're 25 years, and that's why yeah. we, we put in for the roof replacement. And we weren't getting leaks, but we wanted to get it replaced before we started getting to that. Mm -hmm. um, and now we got this report from Collier's. We see all these other things we got to start thinking about. So you, have better, five years. You, have, you have better information now from that. Yes. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Rick, explain, explain what this Collier's is, and is, and is that redundant of overlapping with or... Does it take into consideration the work that the energy performance contracting people are doing? It's different. It's different. There's everything from not just HVAC, but sprinklers. You know, we've got to think about replacing the sprinklers, the uh, okay. fire alarm system. But HVAC would be part of what the energy performance. Part of it. Um, they were just I mean, making a new roof, potentially. 
they're just making recommendations of, you know, your boiler's going to be 30 years old in five years. You, you should think about replacing them, you know. Um, they're more energy. They didn't get to what type of boilers they get. They just said you should replace them in, you know, X number of years. Um, it, it was it was everything of, to painting the walls, the to painting the exterior, you know, replacing ceiling tiles. So it was not all energy efficiency stuff. It was some of it was aesthetics. Well, um, all I'm saying is... It strikes me as it's worthwhile to touch base with the energy performance contracting folks to make yeah. sure that everybody's swimming in the same direction mm -hmm. on this stuff and that they don't have something accounted for in another chunk of money that the town's already sort of accounted for. Sure. And, and maybe with that new, that new study for the, for the energy one, maybe there's some money involved there that somebody's saying maybe we can do earlier. You know, we might have replacing windows four years from now, but maybe we can do some of that sooner if we can tap into some of that those funds. There's a possibility of uh, uh, increasing the scope on the energy performance contract. Um, originally, the Park and Rec building was slated for uh, solar, but because of the age of the roof, it uh, was not included in the energy performance contract, so there is the possibility of adding to the scope on that uh, right. to accommodate some now of those. We have a new so we'll take a look at that. Yeah. Right. Uh, Rick, I want to talk a little bit about <coughs> the senior meal subsidy. It's sort of like going to the third rail in politics, but um, the the reason I'm curious is uh, you currently are at 24 percent expended on that through uh, December. I'm going to assume that the, all all related expenses have been reported. That suggests you're going to be at 50 percent on a, uh, of, of your current budget of 26,000, and you're asking for 26 again. That seems pretty far off. I, I think. Um I think we probably don't have the, the, the second quarter totally in there yet. Uh, my guess is we don't because um, we're pretty much been pretty on with with, uh, with that one. Although last year, Larry did a great job. He was uh, just over 21000 okay. on the actual expenses. Um, but, but part of the offset for that, Matt, which is uh, we're, we're really pleased with, is that we, we offer breakfast. Anybody can come to breakfast, mm -hmm. and, and it's self-supporting. Mm -hmm. You know what I mean? It's not subsidized mm -hmm. uh, by uh, the town. And so... The, the meals are for seniors or people with disabilities, the, right. the lunch. Yeah. But anybody can come for breakfast. So we have people in exercise class that put on some the, the calories that just burned off. <laughs> um, and, and, you know, maybe mothers uh, or fathers while their kids are in gymnastics, maybe they may be having a, a, you know, a, a pancake breakfast or something. And it's great. So the bottom line, though, is that with that is that um, the revenue that we get from that is somewhere between eighteen and $20,000. That also helps offset the, 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 the lunches. Okay. So that gets put into the revenue. That helps offset. If we didn't have that, we'd have to ask for more money to help us, uh, or do we have to charge more for the seniors for the lunch? So the, the breakfast is is um, helping offset that. Okay, but it's still against your expenditure. You're only showing twenty four percent. If you're saying the second quarter is not in there, that 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 brings you to fifty yeah. percent. So can we validate uh, what has been reported uh, to date to more accurately reflect what we've actually expended? Yeah, and that's all, it's always behind a little bit because we, we get revenue from uh, Meals on Wheels. You know, we they, about 75% of the meals we prepare is for Meals on Wheels. Right. And so we bill them, and that fund those that money comes in usually about two weeks into the next month. We bill them monthly. So we're we're in about second week now of January, and so we, I think my guess, not my guess, I know we haven't gotten that yet, so it hasn't been reported yet. So... I think we don't have the fifty, the, 50, the full six months in there yet. Are the Meals on Wheels deli delivered by volunteers? Yes, mm -hmm. which is really yeah. fabulous. It's a great mm -hmm. program, and you know the meals, uh, Matt, since you brought it up, is you know it's it's a lot more than just a meal for these seniors. It's a, really it's a social program. I understand. You know, some of these seniors, it's it's their only hot meal of the day, right. um, and they're. I mean, I, I can tell you three seniors who always sit together for breakfast. They're always together at lunch. And they're there until two o'clock. Yeah. And this is a, it's social, you know. They're coming. They're, they're sitting home by themselves. Rick, don't get me wrong. I'm not yeah, questioning no, the value of the senior meals here. program. I'm saying yeah. there's a significant a discrepancy guy? between what you have reported for expenditures on that line item. So you know, don't be defensive. No, no, I, no, I, I greatly appreciate clear, that program. Clear, and in fact, clarifying. as you know, yeah. I volunteered there yeah. uh, a couple of times. Right, so, right. Um, I, I don't think we have the full six months in there yet. The, the actual numbers would be great, just to make sure. Yeah. Because yeah. it looks like you're running it very efficiently, which is. Fabulous. I appreciate it. We used to. And it's tasty. <laughs> yes, it is, isn't it? Yes. We should all have a 
brought a sample. I want something like that. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> you come for breakfast. Yeah, yeah. breakfast. Could you deliver Any other questions? Thank you. I have not so much a question, maybe, as a point to make about the turf field. <clears throat> the expenses for maintenance of the turf field are included in your budget, but also the savings of having a turf field instead of a traditional grass sod field right. are also we benefit in your budget. Yes. I think it's important for us to keep that in mind as we discuss the replacement of the original turf field. field. Mm -hmm. Which clearly was on the radar from the minute it was approved. We were mm -hmm. told it would be about a ten year life for the carpet. Yeah. Right. Yeah. And and due to great maintenance we've gone beyond that. There was um, there was extensive discussion last night at our joint meeting with the Board of Ed regarding that turf field. Sure. Largely because between that and transportation issues, it makes about a percent, in, one percent increase in what they're asking for this year. Um, so there was some discussion about could it be pushed off another year? Um, what the true cost is going to be dependent on whether we go with what was there before or what is at the new turf field. Um, so, you know, for the town, I mean, it's it's a, it's a big chunk of money. It's you know three hundred thousand dollars split between the two, and I guess some of the conversation last night had to do with well, maybe the town should be taking over. You know, there's some belief that the town should be taking over the complete replacement of that, and in my mind, it doesn't matter whether it's board of ed split with the town or town mm -hmm. takes it over. The board of ed takes it over. It's still taxpayer money that we're talking about six hundred thousand um, dollars. Who? I know it's at its lifespan because I remember going in. I remember the vote. Um, is there another year that that or two years that that field can take? Um, are there are there safety concerns, health concerns <coughs> with it not being replaced this year? Um, and I'm just throwing it out there because it was thrown out last night. Mm -hmm. So we have Field Turf was the company that was purchased from. They're the ones who are maintaining. That I'm talking about the stadium field, not the new one at this point. Um, and we have them twice a year come to do some major maintenance of it. When I say major, I shouldn't, it's not major. But what they do is um, comprehensive. I should Grooming say. And they groom it, yeah. uh, they have a magnet that picks up, I uh, can't tell you how many bobby pins come off that field. <laughs> <Wow>. <laughs> bobby pins and screws maybe that came off a field hockey goal or soccer goal or something. Uh, um, and, and they, so the, the magnet picks all that stuff up. Uh, they add, they, they do the G max test, which it's maximum gravity is what it, it, it's a it's a test that it has to do with with um, the, uh, how hard the field is. So if you get tackled, you fall on it. You, yep. It's got to have a certain cushioning mm -hmm. effect. And so they do that in various parts of the field in areas where it might need a little more. In, in that case, crumb rubber. They add it, you know, where it needs it to make sure it's at whatever level that has to be. Um, and so they do that. Twice a year, we try to get out there um, two to four times a year. I can't tell you we get there four times, but it should be done six times a year. And, and it's our goal. We just don't always get there to do it. But we don't do the same thing because we don't have the same equipment they have, but we can groom it. We brush it up. And, you know, we can, in the uh, high wear areas, like the center area or where the goal mouse are, with a broom, you can kind of push the crumb over back in there. So we do that. Um, and... Um, that when they come, they also uh, repair any seams that might be starting to come apart. It's not a lot of them usually, but there are some they do, and that's part of the contract that, you know, they do that. So the bottom line is that, you know, they, they've said the field for its age is pretty good, you know, better than some they see. I think it's also good we don't plow it. Some people plow, some towns plow their snow off their field. Like, hmm. I'm not going to be the guy authorizing that. I can see somebody hitting the corner of that thing and ripping it up and said, not, I'm not going to be involved <laughs> in that. Now, Jake, if you want to plow, go ahead, but I'm not doing it. <laughs> I wanted to ask you, uh, your time's running short, and I wanted to ask you about the role of volunteers in, in Park and Rec. Uh, a quick line caught me on fireworks, because I remember there was a time when fireworks was contributing to the town. And now we're allocating $10,000 a year to it. have been doing so for a few years. Um, do you see any opportunities to get volunteer support for some activities of Park and Rec that would reduce the impact of your budget? Well, with the fireworks, um, specifically, there was a group of three guys who did fundraising for it, and they raised the money uh, for it. 
And I think they, they spoke with Joe at the time uh, after that, and you know there were some surpluses. And the question was, well, if the town has surplus, why are we raising the money for a town-wide event like this? It's a, it's a whole town-wide event. It's the biggest town-wide event that we have that's town-sponsored. And um, so the agreement was that we put the 10000 back in. We do spend more than that, and some of it comes from another uh, special account we have. Where we, we put some, uh, maybe an extra $2,000 uh, to get a little better show. So we, we do subsidize it to some extent with uh, other, other funds. Um, I mean, the rest of the stuff, I, I, I can't tell you the number of volunteer projects we've had with Boy Scouts. I've got yeah. nine Eagle Scouts right now doing projects with us or applying to do projects with us. Most and of our boat wrecks have been built mm -hmm. by volunteers. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Dog Park was all volunteer. Right. Mm -hmm. uh, disc the, golf will be the a disc lot golf of course will be almost all volunteer labor mm -hmm. you know, to do that. So we do get a lot of volunteers for a lot of those things. Uh, and Mike, I don't know if I finished answering your question. Yeah, so the bottom know. line, I think, is can we get another year out of it? Based on what they're telling me, is it it's in pretty good shape? Is it dangerous, unsafe? No, it's not. Um, but we we put it into the next year because the year after that we have some other very large expenses that we're requesting. So we were trying Try to spread, spread it out. Spread it out. If I could just make one more comment on the turf field uh, in last night's discussion too, the prospect of maybe putting half the money away. For this year and half next year was also discussed as a possibility. Good. Hmm. Would this be the right time for the capital questions that Mr. Trotter raised in the email? Yeah, as long as everybody's here. Yeah, well, specific specific to the, uh, to the park, park and rec. Yes. Yeah. Do you recall the questions you had specific to park and rec? Uh, I don't know if I have them all in front of me. Um, I, I think I was looking at your larger vehicles, and I was wondering if it was a possibility to. to fund them through bonding because they're such substantial pieces of equipment. Uh, I don't I don't really know exactly where you draw the line, whether it's useful well, life. Yeah, a useful life of 15 years, and bonds are typically 20-year bonds, so um, it's not necessarily prudent to be paying for 15-year life equipment. That's yeah, I think that was the other question along with it. You know, can you get 20 years out of equipment like that, a really large dump truck or huge 16-foot mower? Twenty years is tough. Yeah. 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 Our, our maintenance budget will be more. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. I, I know one of the questions was the uh, eight bay parking garage design of it. This bond, th this uh, this capital season, and then the uh, mm -hmm. budget season, and then the build of it. Can you talk a little bit about the need on that? That's a pretty high priority right. for us. Um, well, there's a couple of reasons. One, one is we're just out of space. We have five bays, and um, we have. Lots of equipment that we end up having to store outside because we don't have room for it. Um, with that, we, uh, I mean, it's not a major issue, but it is an issue. Part, part of that, too, we wanted to put a, uh, like a carport to be able to park our buses under. Um, in the past, uh, Public Works had, where they used to hang their sanders uh, down there near their salt shed down there. We, in the winter, we, we were able to park our buses under that. Um, that's not there anymore. I think it's fell down or, or something. The problem is that the buses get covered with snow, and by law, you can't drive them with snow on the roof. Um, and so, I mean, you can imagine a bus is kind of hard to get the snow off. They end up driving it to the community center, and then Todd, our custodian, has a, gets a roof rake. His name is Todd Rake. <laughs> he gets a roof rake, and he, he gets the uh, That's why he does it. He's got the name. He, uh, he takes the snow off, uh, off the buses. And... Um, uh, it, it would just be it would be good if they were be able to be under something, an overhang. I mean, our bus drivers are no offense by age, they're, 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 they're older yeah. guys, and you know they're not going to climb up there on a ladder or something and try to get the snow off the roof. Mm -hmm. uh, that's part time. of it, but just space. I mean, it's time that they should be out driving. Right. Well, that's right. 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 Exactly. But beyond that. Um, but the, the space, the guys are out of space. Um, uh, you know, the, the facilities they have. Uh, you know, Matt, we went down and we looked at it. And, um, they don't have a place to, to really to eat. There's no bathroom facility. The hand wash sink used to just empty into a bucket, and they'd have to empty it out periodically. And now we have a, going out a, a hose, which could you explain where work? they're parked now? Could you explain where they're parked now? You said that you've got five bays. Right. Where are those five bays now? Uh, down at Public Works. Okay. And, and Public Works needs more space. So I, I was asking the questions. Yeah, I think they would love so to have that space. So okay. this would be eight in addition to those. So you would cede the five bays to Public yes. Works, and then you would have this new, right. with, sounds like some carport space for the buses yes. as well. So eight bays plus an overhang. Mm -hmm. And a bathroom. <laughs> no small factor. One of the, one of the challenges is, 
is there available space on that property to even do that? Mm -hmm. uh, and at this point, there isn't. Uh, and there's another significant question that needs to be asked, and that is do we continue to invest in physical plant in an area that's in a floodplain? Right. Uh, um, there's a decision that, you know, had been made many years ago relative right. to placing that facility down there at one end of town, uh, which might, in hindsight might not have been the best location to put that. So do we continue to make capital investments, significant capital investments, in an area that may, may not necessarily be the right place? So, um, so we'll, as we talk Something about, we've, we've, got, we've got to start to look at a, a, a town-wide uh, facilities uh, study at some point. I hate to keep talking about studies, but um, we need to start to assess the overall needs before we start making, uh, you know, spot decisions in terms of where we're going to build stuff. Mm -hmm. uh, so. Well, and to that point, Matt, we had money in next year's budget for, uh, in this, this request, right. for architectural engineering services, so maybe right. that's part of that responsibility, to help determine right. where's the best place right. to put this and where can it go feasibly. Exactly. So, right. go ahead, John. Yeah, so I think I, I have sort of a general concern, too, that we're going to take on some of these larger projects that are expansive and, uh, yeah, obviously it's what I would categorize as, as nice to have, but is it is it essential? You know, we're, we're looking at a pretty high mill rate. You know, we're looking at issues going forward with how much state aid we'll get for our town budget. And uh, projects like this concern me. You know, how essential are they? How much value are we going to get? You know, we're a town of 23,000 people. You know, how much facility do we really want to carry? So I get concerned when the, another million-dollar project comes up. Is it nice to have? Yes, of course. You know, it's, it, it is nice to have, but uh, is it essential? Yes. Go down and take a look at it, seriously. Really, It really is, is an awful place to have to spend all winter. I'm sorry? As it's an awful place to have to spend all winter for these guys. There's no place to eat. There's no bathroom. It's just really not conducive. Oh, in the current? The current. current so it really yeah. does need looking at it. I just want, for the record, we had some discussions related to that. There are yeah. bathroom facilities in the yes. public works facility, and I understand the concern is you have, in the cold, you have to go out and walk across the parking lot to use the facility. Uh, and it would be my expectation that there is no reason that Park and Rec can't share that facility, including their break room uh, uh, and uh, and even the bunk room upstairs. Um, if if there is an if there is a turf issue around that. Um, then uh, you don't you don't think there's a turf issue, or is there? I don't one? think there should be. There there should not be. Uh, this is town property, so uh, they should be able to, to to access those facilities. Yes, it's a bit inconvenient to have to go out to go to the bathroom across the parking lot. Um, <coughs> so, but I but I, I I think in the interim, oh, no, they're no, not the denied interim. a facility. Right. It is a right. convenience. No, I agree. Okay, just wanted that. But I think record. it is something that's important to look at in right. the future. Right. And so I think the more important is, is that, I mean, that's important, but we, we just need space. Right. We just not, we're out of space with all of our We're talking space. about, we, we've been harping on the vehicle maintenance, mm -hmm. and yet we're not protecting the vehicles. Right. right. So well, I think. sitting out all the time. I mean, no, I'm not saying that people aren't about important. That, they are very important, right. but the vehicles are your, your, that's your. That's your, where your money. That's, right. that's the big money that we're spending. So. Mm -hmm. so I just have one. Just one question about that one kind of point is that you know would it really change the useful life of the vehicle? Maybe, it maybe it would defray some maintenance costs, yes. but wouldn't we still replace that? I, I suggest a useful life. I think a garage vehicle. vehicle with Any, anything that's rubber on a vehicle that sits outside is subject to uh, uh, cracking and freezing, yeah. um, and that's why most of our expensive vehicles for public works are. Are garaged and housed. Uh, it hoses, uh, seals, all that kind of stuff. When exposed, when exposed to the elements, uh, are subject to uh, um, deterioration, uh, which would increase your maintenance. Have we have we looked at a cost benefit analysis like that, where we think it's worth a million dollar investment? It no, John, take a lot is, of money John, to John, this, is, this is this is introductory preliminary discussions at this point. Okay, and as I said. We do need to take a look at uh, a town-wide facilities needs study. So, this is this is this is the at yeah, the outset, enough. which is why they requested eighty thousand dollars for a study, study. purpose. Yeah. yeah. So, Jeff, you had a question before. I did. That's what you get for sending the cheap seats back. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> um, one of the items that you've done that Park and Rec has taken care of in the past is weight modified weed control, mm -hmm. and I don't see it in this upcoming mm -hmm. budget. Is it? A, 
Is it a project that we've closed the books on and you're waiting or when's it going to no, start? I, I think we, if we don't have any capital, it might be the year after, um, but I capital. think it might be in it. But um, we have it in the next five years, we have it in two or three more times. So we're doing an ongoing thing. Um, uh, but actually, the, um, the project that we had done this past summer <coughs> Turn up considerably less expensive than what we had budgeted. So there's still money there we can do again this spring. We can still use that money. So if we don't have it in next year, which I, I don't have that budget right in front of me, uh, yes. is it in next year? Yes, it is. Okay. Yeah. Your capital yeah, but there, there's funds in there that we can we can uh, continue to maintain it. And we're working with the uh, the friends of Lake Quantipog. They kind of <coughs> pick spots. Well, you know, can you get, can you address this area? I mean, they're there all the time. They know what the areas are, are the, the rough spots there, and so. Uh, the first go around was the um, 10 or 12 acres, um, you know, on the north end of the lake by the, the boat ramp area, that, that area, the beach area, and then we call this the shoals, it's sort of a shallow area. If you're, and the beach looking out sort of to the right, which is a very shallow, there were a lot of uh, invasive weeds there. The first project was uh, because we had a state grant, it was invasive weeds only. So that's all we could go after. The second phase, we went after some of the lily pads and stuff on the uh, the very south end of the lake that choked it out. If you went out with a kayak in August, you couldn't get to the dam. I mean, there's there was no path to get through there. So that that was we're going to hit that again. I think next spring, and then um, I forgot I, again off the top of my head. I can't remember what the next phase is, but it's in there to continue. That. And then just a quick follow. Up for you. Oh, oh, up, I exactly. Think. Um, for the graduation, does Park and Rec set that up and take it down? No, yeah. school, 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 school does that. Okay. Yeah. Okay. Anything else? Thank you very much. Okay, thank, you. thank you. Guys. Thank you. Thank, thank you. Thank you. Let me get you another coffee somewhere. <laughs> well, I can bring over a coffee and uh, <laughs> Thank you, baby. I'll get you some pancakes at the community. Why do we have a breakfast in the lobster biscuit? Rick, you want it? Rick, would you like the chief know we're ready? Good morning, Chief and Commissioner Ricola. Good morning. How are you? Uh, before we begin, uh, I'll say it again. Mm -hmm. We did it at the Board of Selectmen. Congratulations to the department, yourselves, uh, on a tremendous operation that was conducted over this weekend to protect the children of this community. For those who may not be aware, it was a major uh, sting operation. Uh, sting is a is that well, the, that's the word, uh, where uh, we uh, uh, arrest uh, five uh, would-be child uh, molest Predator. and perpetrate predators were arrested uh, based on an operation out of Guilford. So congratulations to the department on, Thanks, yeah. on a job well done. Yeah. Okay, on to more mundane topics. Yeah. <laughs> um, all right, uh, so everybody has our proposed budget. I'll start... Uh, just by uh, saying something you'll be happy to hear. We're not looking for any new positions. Uh, <laughs> so that's important for you to know uh, as we as we work through this. Um, um, a lot of this is, as you know, contractual, and we don't have a lot of control over the numbers. Um, and when I work through that, I'll just mention those that uh, you're probably already well aware of, but I think it's important to point out. So um, as you work down, the town clerk fees and the dog warden fees, that's revenue um, that um, is generated through dog licensing, um, and that comes off uh, on the bottom line of our, of our budget. That's really nothing we have much control over either. It's really just a uh, uh, projected uh, revenue for that. Um, police salaries, as you know, contractual. Um, 
we don't uh, our our guys are under a current contract, so we don't have to worry about any uh, new money coming in on that. Um, so their um, their salaries are defined by contract. Um, civilian salaries. Um, the uh, administrative assistant contract expires uh, at the end of this uh, at the end of June uh, this fiscal year, as does the GEA contract. Um, and the dispatcher's contract. So when you look at the civilian salaries, it does not reflect potential raises that might be uh, uh, showing up as a result of any uh, collective bargaining agreements that are signed later. Um, but what you'll see in the increases is there's some uh, employees that are moving up in grade, grade that have been there for a period of time. So that would that would be uh, uh, accounting for those increases. And over time, um, and we explain this every year, and I'll and I'll do it this year again. Um, <laughs> we have we have new board members. There you go. Okay. So as we go through this, we have overtime, we have training, and we have replacement, which covers costs of uh, of manpower during different situations. Overtime. Uh, this weekend is an example of where overtime would would come into play. If you have if we have an investigation on on, on more simpler terms, if an officer is working till 3 p.m. and they go to a car accident and they're stuck to, there till 4 o'clock. That's overtime. If we have a specific investigation and after hours call in for um, a fatal motor vehicle accident or a uh, operation like this, most of that is going to be officers working on overtime, those that we can't um, staff with normal staffing. Um, so that's where the overtime comes in. Training. Um, Police Officer Standards and Training Council requires a certain level of training every year as we conduct this training. Uh, the officers that are working uh, may be on their regular shift and have to attend this training. In that case, we need to replace them with other officers to maintain our minimum staffing. So we track this differently to make sure that we know how much uh, our costs are in each of these different areas, overtime training. Um, replacement. Replacement is uh, a situation where an officer is on vacation, holiday, personal day, sick time. Uh, again, we have minimum manpower on each shift. If an officer uh, calls in sick and that brings us below our minimum staffing, we're going to have to call somebody in. In that particular case, that's a replacement cost. The reason our replacement has been uh, uh, is higher than the others uh, is because there's way more days that replacement uh, comes into play. But also, uh, as explained previously, um, we have uh, tradition. In, in the last five years, we did a, a study. We've been about 15% down in staff. So it makes it more likely that we're not going to have our minimum staffing, which makes it more likely that we need to replace. We're currently, although fully staffed in the books, we're actually eight, seven officers down. Because while they're working, we have four that just got out of the academy that aren't on their own yet. We have two others in the academy. Uh, we have an officer out for a uh, um, off-duty incident. Uh, and we just received a, a resignation letter retirement letter from another officer who will be leaving in a few weeks. So while people are working and being trained and getting geared up to, uh, to get on the road, we're still down. So that's about uh, 25 to 30 percent of our patrol staff. So uh, replacement has been uh, um, higher than usual because of uh, that staffing issue. We're in a cycle of retirement um, and I think I'm hoping that within the next year that's going to stabilize. Before you go on, can you just comment on how long it takes to get an just officer on the road? Sure. Yeah. Um, from the point that we post a job, and there's two different ways we can hire somebody. This is a new hire, uh, someone that's never been a police officer before. We post the job. Uh, there's a, uh, uh, a testing process that's done regionally where uh, we're able to get more uh, candidates attracted. So if, uh, if Guilford needs officers, we're running tests with Guilford, Brantford, Madison, um, South Central Criminal Justice Administration runs our testing for us regionally. So we post the test, we have the test, we interview candidates, um, we identify candidates, we conduct backgrounds on candidates that the police commission decides to hire. Uh, we send them to the, to the police academy for 24 weeks. When they get out of there, we train them for another 12 weeks in-house for our local training. Uh, so beginning to end, you're looking at about a year. So where some other places might need to fill a gap, they'd hire somebody who's qualified as an accountant, an electrician, they can stick them right in after a little bit of training. That's not really the case here. Uh, in order to try and save that amount of time and expense, 
we've sought uh, lateral candidates from other agencies that are retiring from somewhere else or uh, have a reason to <coughs> want to come to Guilford instead of stay where they are. Um, we've conducted five in the last two years, and we've been able to hire one officer uh, in that process. Uh, that was a uh, younger officer that came here from Torrington uh, because he had some particular interest in being here geographically, um, and, and that was about it. So we've not had a lot of success in attracting people from other uh, departments. Um, primarily, um, most places still have a, a traditional pension, and, and we don't. So. It's just a, it's just a fact of how things work. So, we keep looking, we keep trying. We'll, we'll keep running the uh, lateral tests as well, and see if we can come up with some candidates. But in the meantime, we still have to get people on the road, and so we're doing that. Um, in order to calculate our overtime uh, and replacement, we take a three-year average, um, and that's tended to work for us in the past. So, uh, we'll average out uh, the last three years of um, fiscal years of training costs as compared to overall salary. Um, so what percent of overall salary did it cost for, for us to fill our overtime or our replacement? We'll take that percentage and apply it to this year's uh, salary, and that calculates our number for what we're requesting. It sounds like the replacement, though, maybe you, you might have gone by a base on that, but your replacement sounds with the situation right now. You may have adjusted that beyond that average. Right, but that will, you know, in fiscal year 18, uh, 17, 18, we're still absorbing a lot of those shortfalls in staffing. So hopefully as we move forward, that three-year average will even out. Okay. Um, and that's my projection, but certainly no guarantees. Um. Chief Hutchinson, sure. are you allowed to uh, run a shift with less than your minimum staff? No. Is that a statute? Or? No, it's not statutory. Uh, it's Are we allowed to? I guess I won't allow it, um, and the commission wouldn't allow it. Uh, it's a safety concern. Um, it, it gets down to response times, availability to address any kind of cases that come in. Um, I'm not going to say what our minimum staffing is for each shift right now. I'd be happy to tell people off camera. That's not something I'd like to discuss in the public so people don't know how many people are on the road at a time. Uh, we like to have uh, appearance of omnipresence. So um, <laughs> Understood. Uh, yeah, but uh, I'd be happy to talk to you about that. But there are, uh, we do a manpower study, uh, and it's based upon calls for service, response time, um, and number of available officers to address those. Um, so you're happy. To, I'd be happy to let you see that. We just did our, no, our most recent study. Yeah. Yeah. Chief, Makes you sense. said we're, di we're disadvantaged by our pension program in, com in comparison to other communities. Could you comment on that? What, what, what's it's just, the disadvantage? Uh, it's just simply uh, people that want to uh, work in policing uh, find more uh, personal benefit to going into a defined pension plan than a defined contribution. Um, so the so the 401 is not a, as attractive as a, as, traditional, as a traditional pension plan. Um, we just feel that that's one of the reasons yeah. when we try to do the lateral tests, that's what the feedback that we Because our, our get, salaries so. are pretty good compared to, uh, mm -hmm. to other yeah. agencies. So our salaries are... attractive agency, but we try every single cycle to bring in a lateral. And <coughs> I'm not saying that's the be-all, end-all, but it's just... It's one of the reasons. Chief, just, just following up on that, how many uh, officers live in Guilford or even communities? Uh, in Guilford or surrounding communities, is that what you said? Um, good uh, there's, a, there's a larger amount that are traveling from a little farther out, but we have a provision in our duty manual that you can't live outside of 20 miles. Um, so everybody's within 20 miles. There's several in Guilford. There's several Madison, Bradford. Uh, Durham, right around, right around here. So 20 miles is pretty tight, um, um, and, and that's, that's an response operate, time. It's an operational necessity. Yeah. yeah. If we need somebody in, we don't want them in uh, Nyack. Um, you know, some agencies have people living out of state. Some people have no uh, requirement for uh, for geographical. Well, if you're in Stonington, it's not so bad. But. Yeah. <laughs> so, so can I circle back to that pension question a little bit? Is there any indication that the, the, the inverse is true? In other words, have we lost anybody, and that's been the stated reason why they may have left? Go, going to an agency with a pension yeah, outside yeah, of here? Yeah, um, fully good. We've, we've had one leave um, <coughs> from the loss to another pension, <coughs> to another uh, agency that had a pension. Again, we, we have the, the there's a huge... Too. A huge turnover in the last, kind of unprecedented, really, with the number of people um, 
you know, I was looking at the numbers the other day, and since I've been chief almost three years, we've hired uh, 15 officers, um, and that's from retirement, uh, injury, uh, resignation. Um, we've replaced just under half the department. Yeah. So it's um, so I'm again. I'm hoping this is all going to stabilize. Like I said, we have four that just came out of the academy. We got another two in, and we're expecting another two going in in April. Um, so <laughs> we're. We're hoping that stabilizes. Um, yeah, that's, there's only a couple. That's, quite, that's disturbing. Yeah. Um, but you do have surrounding areas that still have pensions. Because I, I know two people that went to Yale, and they have a pension for their yeah. police department. Mm -hmm. um, yes, yeah, fiscal it's hard to argue with. Yeah. Yeah. Understandably, if a new. Uh, oh, yeah, sure. But understandably, for a new uh, hire, if they're looking uh, real closely at their long-term benefits of their job opportunities it is what it is. And Every decision has consequences. Sure. Got it. Yeah. 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 Thanks. All right, Chief. Okay. Um, so uh, salaries that covered uh, civilian overtime and replacement, I think we just covered, as well as training. Stipends was something that came into the contract uh, last time around, which we didn't have previously. Um, every week we have one lieutenant and one detective on call in the event that uh, – uh, we have to call them in, and that happens fairly frequently. And as a um, collective bargaining, um, in the collective bargaining agreement, uh, each person gets 50 bucks a week to, to be on call because it does, uh, you know, it does uh, keep them from doing things they might otherwise do. So, um, sick leave exchange is a contractual item um, that's getting smaller and smaller each year um, as as the officers who worked under the old collective bargaining agreements retire out. Um, this number used to be way up in the 30s and 40,000s. We're down to um, uh, $10,000 on that. And in a few years, you'll probably see that drop even even more um, as people retire. Um, special events, we're calling it special events in the past. It was confusing. Uh, for those of you who have been on and listened to this before, it used to be called outside services donated. Uh, in reality, there's nothing donated about it other than the town donating the services to uh, these particular events. Um, it's everything from the uh, from the, the fair parade to the um, and expo. The craft, expo. The, the craft expo to no craft expo. Uh, um, hey, oh, yeah, sorry about um, yep, yep, yep. The, the holiday tree lighting, the walk on Broad Street. So um, these are special events that uh, that we cover with staffing that we need to for public safety reasons. Um, <coughs> educational benefits, another contractual item based upon. Um, uh, officers uh, level of education they receive a stipend for that for that amount and that's defined by the officers we have and the education level that they possess um, utilities um, and fuel and gasoline those numbers are um, provided by uh, town hall based upon whatever contract we sign with the uh, providers um, and the gasoline is defined by the number of gallons we use by the um, compared to the cost per gallon um, and again not a lot of control over that I will say that um, we continue to see, uh, as we roll out our last Crown Victoria, um, the gas fuel mileage uh, increases as we put the newer, newer vehicles into uh, into our fleet substantially. Uh, the Crown Victorias were big eight-cylinder cars that were getting about between seven and nine miles per gallon, um, and the newer ones are in the 13 to 14 range. So it's a significant. Uh, advantage to where do you uh, get the fuel? Does, do you go to pub, do, do they go to public works we have a, or do you have no, your we have own tanks? Yeah. Yeah. Um, communications electronics. Um, this is covering we get to uh, everything from our uh, police radio um, to um, uh, our, our video <laughs> cameras in the car repairs. The um, unanticipated costs for any electronics that we have. One new item in there is a GPS tracking device for our, our police canine. Uh, it's a small item at 800 bucks, but I think you saw the news recently. There was a yeah. dog that got lost yeah. on the track. Mm -hmm. uh, we have devices that, that we can put on a dog and track it in case the dog gets left off leash and, and goes on a pursuit of somebody and then gets lost or injured. So uh, we added that in there. But the radar units on the cars, uh, the radios um, that we need to purchase, the mobile uh, the mobile radios that the officers carry, um, those are the costs associated with electronics and communications. Building maintenance, um, 
That covers everything from our from our HVAC repairs, unanticipated HVAC repairs, generator repairs, groundskeeping, uh, doors, windows, the sprinkler systems, video cameras in the building again, um, shredding costs, boiler inspections, all the things that you would expect for the maintenance of a building. Um, these are defined uh, by uh, our projected needs for each one of these these areas. It's been fairly consistent. Um, and doesn't fluctuate too much, but uh, as an example, right now our building's 20 years old. We've had our HVAC vendor in for the last week. Um, we, motors are going on our uh, uh, water pumps for our for our boilers. The boilers are shutting down, um, and we've been spending a few bucks on that for HVAC costs and unanticipated things. So that's the sort of stuff that our building maintenance uh, budget is going to cover. <coughs> Before you go on, Chief, I sure. have a, I have a question on building maintenance. Mm -hmm. it, it, how old is the building now? Twenty years. And recently, we had some problems in the education side of the building with pipes bursting because of the cold mm -hmm. thing. Have not you, mm -hmm. but have your maintenance people gone through the building? Because you have a lot. I would assume you have a lot of areas that are exposed more so to the cold than. Other areas. I mean, are we checking? We had we had one pipe issue uh, during the cold snap recently. It was a minor one, but it uh, uh, there was it's an exterior wall up in the eaves. Yeah, that's the, what I'm talking about. In the lockup area, um, um, he, um, uh, and in 20 years, never had a problem. And, and we're crawling up there to see if we can insulate it a little better. Yeah. But it was a small leak in one of the sprinkler heads as a result. Yeah. Um, so yeah. yeah. And that's the last thing you need is a burst sprinkler. Yes, <laughs> correct. Yeah, so the fire department came over, shut it down for us while we got it repaired. And, yeah. Um, <clears throat> so yeah, there's a, there's some things that are popping up that we hadn't had before. Um, well, I think that's true of everybody. Yeah, I mean, sure. it's been unprecedented. Right. Uh, where are we at? Uh, service contracts. Um, service contracts uh, covers everything from the cost of participating in CALEA accreditation. Um, we have all kinds of software licenses that we need to maintain from our accident reconstruction, our antivirus. Um, this covers our fire system maintenance for sprinklers and alarm systems, our uh, firewalls for our computers, um, HVAC, uh, normal uh, service contract, um, IT tech support. Uh, there's a lot of IT issues that, uh, that have popped up since we uh, went from having a full-time IT officer in the building. Um, so sometimes we need some outside support to, uh, to cover the IT needs that we have. Um, custodial contract falls under that, um, as well as our uh, powered DMS training manual software. That's, an, um, that's a web-based system that we use uh, to conduct and track our training as well as uh, issue policy and update policy. It used to be all paper. We eliminated all the printing costs. Sorry, Charles. Uh, and eliminate all the printing costs associated with that and went uh, went uh, electronic and web-based on that. Um, our radio service contract with our radio vendor, um, our service contract on our uh, dispatch report maintenance system, which is that next-gen system we purchased several years ago. Um, uh, security uh, on the alarm for our range. Um, the regional group I talked about before, South Central Criminal Justice, that conducts all of our testing. Um, we have a uh, annual dues that are uh, uh, required for that. Um, and uh, working down the line, all the, all the service contracts we have for our website hosting, our website maintenance, <coughs> our, our watch guard software, which is our in-car cameras. Um, and then we have a contract for um, int interpreters. It's a small item, uh, our language line, where if we have a individual we need to speak to that speaks a different language, we have an interpreter, uh, contract with an interpreter. Uh, uniform clothing, that is contractual based upon uh, wherever anybody's assigned. Um, nothing we can do different than that. Um, copiers and leases, again, contractual. We have two copiers in the building, one in the admin office and one for the uh, in the copy room for records and the officers to use. Let me make one quick comment on that item. On I the copiers? Yeah, not a big concern for law enforcement, I know, <laughs> but uh, I just thought maybe we would see that kind of break we were getting in the lease across all the departments for the copier lease. Uh, I'd have to look to see. Some, 
Overall, our copier budget is down across the town. Yep. Um, some uh, copiers were replaced by a more heavy-duty copier, so some departments received a better copier than they had in the past based on usage, and some were, you know, given uh, given a lesser machine, but they they had well lower need. So overall, some some budgets might have been up, but um, okay. overall. Yeah, you followed. I was, I was looking for a 15 percent, you know, break there as well. Right. Okay. So I, I'd have to go back to two years ago to see. Well, we did purchase these to town hall and on the uh, on the group um, contracts, and I will say that um, what this has allowed us to do because of the capability of these copiers to, to network in is we've gotten rid of a lot of printers. Printer costs are huge, as you yeah. as you know, uh, printer replacement, uh, cartridge replacement, uh, ink, all that. So it costs a lot less per uh, page to print to the copier than it does to have everybody have a uh, printer at their desk, which we don't have anymore. Oh, okay. Um, so that's one of the things a couple years ago we slid out as we as we got these networked copiers. Sounds good. Yeah. Um, Sorry, I didn't mean to break your rhythm. No, that's fine. Um, police medical. Um, this includes everything from our employee assistance program, EAP program um, contract, um, to all the costs associated with hiring new people. So when we hire somebody, we have to give them a psychological. Um, we give them all their uh, pre-employment physicals. Uh, that costs us money. Um, and then people uh, that we hire, um, we provide TB and hepatitis uh, testing and vaccinations and respiratory tests to make sure that they're capable of wearing a, uh, the appropriate equipment. Um, and uh, rabies vaccinations when we hire an animal control officer. So that's all included in our police medical. Does that also include psychological services if an officer if an officer needs assistance? Right, that's the EAP part of it, the employee that, assistance program. That includes program. psychological services? Right, yeah. yeah so we pay uh, um, $1,800 for that. It's a per employee staff. <coughs> and is it being used to your knowledge? I mean, I well, um, they don't, uh, we're not allowed to know if people yeah, are using it. That's, so, that's um, you know, they'll, they'll give us a... Uh, a little bit of feedback if something's in well I don't I don't mean that I just meant our our employees taking advantage certainly of the benefit. I, I believe they are know. and they're certainly aware of it we have the posters all around anytime there's a, an incident or an issue we have a procedure by which we'll refer somebody there but uh, even on a referral unless it's a required supervisory uh, referral related to job performance uh, we're not getting any feedback uh, just legally we're not going to get that back I just want to make sure that it's available. It's absolutely available and, and widely publicized as, as available. So, um, office supplies, uh, that's the papers and the pencils and um, the markers that we need to to, uh, to get things done in the building. Um, and that's under, uh, we purchased all that through the town's contract with WB Mason at this point, they have to bid right now. Um, operating supplies, uh, it's a range of uh, Costs associated associated with running, uh, and although a lot of a, a lot of what we do is web-based, we still have to print a lot of reports. Uh, so we do have printing costs associated with that. Uh, we're buying signs and barricades. Uh, we have cones and and things that you see out on the streets when we have um, uh, events that we need those for. Animal food uh, for the animals in the uh, shelter, as well as for the uh, police canine, falls under that. Um, there's costs associated with running backgrounds on people, so we have operating operating costs for this accurate background service that we have. Um, crime prevention falls under here. Crime prevention does a lot of good work, as you know, everything from the Citizens Police Academy uh, to all the uh, events that, if you follow the Facebook page, that our crime prevention unit uh, participates in and runs. Um, uh, polygraph costs come under here, so we polygraph people when we when we hire. Um, we have to pay uh, either a, a private vendor, we usually use the state police, and so our costs for that fall under there. Um, a, a few things I want to point out under our operating supplies, because there's there's two new items in here, and I think yesterday's, uh, this weekend's operations point out the value of this. Uh, we've added uh, $2,000, uh, which is a small number, I think, for the Shoreline Regional SWAT Team, um, $3,000, I'm sorry, and 2000 for the Shoreline Regional Technical Crimes Group. Um, the SWAT team is a regional group. Um, we have four officers assigned to it. Um, what that does is allows us to have 
uh, that uh, that force available when we need it. We used to run our own, and we needed to keep 16, 20 guys trained and, and equipped, and it's just we're not – we can't do that in a department this small. So by just committing four people and uh, a few thousand dollars, uh, when something bad happens uh, and that team's needed, uh, we'll have 24 guys available. Um, uh, we participate with – Brantford, Madison, uh, North Brantford, North Haven, um, and uh, Clinton are on that team. So officers are assigned to that team, and they show up when, when we need them. So I think it, it's a small investment for a big, uh, a big turn back. Um, the Shoreline Regional Technical Crimes Group, $2,000. This is a new group that we joined. Uh, it's basically a, a group of specialized officers who are trained in uh, cyber investigation. Um, we have an officer that's a, a, a network intrusion specialist. Other towns have cell phone uh, specialists. Other officers have hardware specialists. So when we ran our operation this weekend, we actually had three officers from other towns who had specific specialties that were helping us with this investigation, not only on the front end, but on the back end, because there's a lot of back end work that's going to happen after these arrests. Um, this week, the officers from other towns are doing our work in dumping the cell phones, doing the search warrants to get all the information out of there to support the prosecution of the people that we just arrested. So um, in addition to, um, you know, the types of crimes we investigated this weekend, the Shoreline uh, Regional <coughs> Technical Crimes Group also um, has capabilities for uh, financial frauds over the Internet, which, as we all know, are increasing. Um, their capabilities would include if we had a a serious crime, a, a robbery, a homicide, even burglaries and robberies. Um, a lot of the information now, uh, a lot of the evidence is electronic. So although they're specialized for financial um, and and uh, and uh, violent crimes, we can use them for everything from burglaries to uh, uh, finance, any sort of smaller financial crime if they're not busy, obviously. But an investment of $2,000, I think, is a small investment for the return that we get. Mm -hmm. So, does each town kind of take a different element <clears throat> of <clears throat> investigation? <throat> so, how do you decide what Guilford's going to do to contribute to? Essentially, uh, so one of the things I didn't mention this this group was put together by the Secret Service. Secret Service, um, for those who don't know, have the responsibility in addition to dignitary protection of doing financial crime investigations in the country, um, um, uniform commercial code stuff, banking uh, things. And so they don't have enough people to do what they need to do. So they've reached out uh, to us, and we're one of the uh, first in the country to do this. I happened to uh, – the guy who was running the New Haven office actually went to school here in Guilford for one year, and I knew him from years ago, and he approached me and asked if we wanted to participate. So we started up this group. Secret Service has this training uh, location in Hoover, Alabama, where they send people to get specialized training in areas. So um, when we put together this team and we put together the uh, – departments involved, we just identified officers who were going to do this specific training. <clears throat> just there was no specific reason why we had network intrusion and the other place had cell phones, but the goal is to have redundancy and get as many people down to this training as possible so that not only Clinton has, not only will Clinton have a phone guy, but we will as well, uh, and then we'll turn it over and train as many as possible to, uh, to do this sort of work. I don't know if that answers your question or not. Um, so that is our operating supplies. Computer hardware is pretty much just what it says. Um, we have a lot of um, um, we have laptops in every car. We have desktops in each office, um, and uh, we have a replacement schedule, which is about four years for each for each unit. Um, and we try and keep up with that to make sure that we don't fall too far behind on the uh, on those units because they uh, as the software. It's more advanced. The computers need more um, capability to run the software that we're that we're getting. Um, let's see. Special investigations, uh, <coughs> a smaller item, but the detective unit uh, has needs for everything from fingerprint dust to uh, all the tools and um, equipment that they need to uh, conduct their investigations. Uh, there's a new item on here: a fingerprint <laughs> dusting downdraft station. Um, Officers in our, we have a small lab where we do a lot of uh, um, evidence processing. Um, 
we have a hood in there, but it's not appropriate for the type of work they're doing with, with fingerprint uh, dusting. The downdraft station pulls the dust down instead of sucking it up, um, and it's a better application for what they're trying to do. And that's that's a three thousand dollar item that I would I would hope the uh, the board would support in making sure we got that for our guys to do uh, uh, a better job with their evidence collection and processing. That's just a one time cost. One time. Yeah, you know, it's a piece of equipment that uh, that they're requesting. <clears throat> training and development. Um, not to be confused with training salaries and training and development. These are all the tools and equipment and things that we need to uh, complete the training that the officers are required to have. Uh, this is everything from ammunition to uh, range time for our uh, snipers. Um, career development is um, would include if somebody gets promoted, we'll send them to specialized training. Roger Williams has a program for for that uh, where we send all new sergeants and all new uh, lieutenants for a two-week program um, for supervisory training. Um, this also includes uh, you know, weapons cleaning supplies, canine supplies for our, new, for our canine officer, uh, training fees for the officers that attend post, um, and our CALEA accreditation, which is a zero this year because uh, we just went to our conference. So I leave that in there as a placeholder. So um, you'll see that pop up again in a few years. And sometimes we'll have outside instructor costs for uh, officers uh, to come in and uh, train us in areas that we don't have a specialty in. And Chief, you have a, a, an item there for unanticipated expenses, <coughs> essentially a contingency, right? Correct. How often have you gone into that? Um, training and development is generally is generally spent, um, and and the costs associated with that are usually related to um, if we had uh, more promotions than expected. So the cost for for training those supervisors uh, jumps up on us when we didn't expect it. We've had a lot of uh, promotions in the last few years. Um, and uh, also for uh, outside instructor costs, sometimes those are more than expected. Uh, so one of the things, for example, as a result of last weekend, uh, we're going to uh, uh, sponsor and hold some training for um, online uh, safety for parents to be aware of, and that's going to cost us probably Eight hundred to a thousand dollars to bring in a special um, uh, a person that's specially trained in that to conduct those trainings for the public. So that something like that would be coming out of there. <clears throat> Motor vehicle maintenance. Uh, we come up with these numbers based on input from the town garage. Uh, Ralph will go through uh, with our support services lieutenant. Let us know what the cost for each of these uh, items will be. Uh, based on uh, his experience and historicals on the cars, we just define uh, what that number is going to be, and that's generally pretty close to uh, what he's projected. Um, and that is that. We've already covered the capital stuff. Sure. I have a question for you um, regarding the um, school resource officer right. and the credit you get from Board of Education. Mm -hmm. Is that sufficient to cover the uh, the coverage that you have over the seven buildings? Oh, $20, no. $20,000? No, uh, no, no. no. Um, so uh, I don't know uh, if everybody remembers, but there was a period of, a couple of years ago the school resource officer was not deployed. Uh, when I became chief, I thought it was important to put the school resource officer back in the high school. And uh, we came to an agreement with. Um, the, uh, the schools, uh, the school board, that they would fund a portion of that so that we could actually uh, support that position. So the $20,000 is a small portion of what's required for us to staff it. So we have the officer full-time up at the high school, um, except for the summertime, obviously. Mm -hmm. um, and that officer also spends time at the middle school. We have officers in every other school every other day. Um, so this is really just them uh, ponying up to help us a little bit to, uh, to get that officer up there. Doesn't come close to it. Mm -hmm. no. <laughs> I wouldn't. I just wondered yeah. about the number. It's just a little bit of help. A little bit of help number. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. On that on that same page, there's another category uh, called extra days pay for nine thousand dollars. Yeah. Twenty nine officers. So so I thought we had that sort of other salary. Yeah. So that valid, extra but. days pay when you calculate out most most are calculated out of fifty two weeks, and when you look at a calendar. There's always, because we're a 365-day 
a year. Right. Um, business. So a 52 week, it's not always 365 days right. that falls within our pay period. Right. So there's always one extra day in a leap year, you're going to see two. <laughs> <laughs> Two extra days. I'm sure that's questions come up before. Yeah, it has. We, we throw it in there answer. because, you know, it's it's not a small number, $9,000. So yeah. uh, we like to account for but it's it. An actual, it's an actual expense that is incurred every year at, at a minimum of one year. Right. And we try and uh, we average it out with the number of people that are uh, working um, on the weekends, um, mm -hmm. working on the days that you know, sometimes you have, some, you have a lot of Monday, Friday employees, but not everybody is. And a couple other items. If uh, I sure, absolutely. So... Um, <clears throat> Both in your utilities area and your building maintenance, I'm going to sort of ask, because well, you weren't here before for park and rec, but so I'm just sort of curious, if in the formulating of the energy performance contract bid, did you hear from those folks? In other words, if they come to your facilities, given an analysis, do you have any idea what's likely to happen from them? I mean, you have an, an item here for $46,000 worth of electrical for police, mm -hmm. animal shelter, range, basketball courts. Um, do you know what they're likely to do for you? No. And and likewise on the uh, building maintenance, same kind of things. I mean, is, are there likely to be savings that are coming from that program? I'm hopeful, um, but when we when we calculated the, our electrical needs, um, town hall provided us with the electrical costs as a comparison to yeah. last year and including the increases. So based on the fact that there's no hard plans in place for any particular improvements for our buildings. I thought it was important to make sure that we budgeted that. No question. Um, We're on yeah. the front end. I realize yeah. that. But I'd be really curious. It's it's certainly something I'm interested in when I when I I mean it'd be nice in nine years to see that oh, level absolutely. level or down. Absolutely. Uh, after we spend some money with saving. these folks. Yeah. Um, and if I could just finish all my questions in one shot. Um, okay. back to contracted service. And thanks for that explanation. I appreciate it. I sure. know that. I realize sort of where that is, but I just am curious if they reached out to you, if I could circle well, we back. Well, I did have conversations last year with that with that group, uh, okay. along with Cliff Gurnham. Okay. Um, and the, and they did uh, they did come to our building, but I don't I don't have any they have a projections for me to, to rely upon. Yeah, their presentation is going to put a section on all the <coughs> yeah. I'm not poking yeah. at them. I just yeah. want to make sure we, some, we have a way of catching all this data as it right. as it yeah. plays right. out. It's so. primarily going to be lighting fixtures and uh, bulbs. Right. For, for and facilities we've had like that years. done over the last several years. We have switches installed that you know, uh, most, you know, motion switches right. um, in all the appropriate offices. Um, lighting, I'm sure. We've already had exterior lighting improvements. Right. Um, there was a group of, a couple of years ago that did that. A lot of LEDs that we're replacing the others, um, so I'm not sure how much. Yeah, okay. there's some um, air yeah. handling upgrade, some motor replacements. I, I have the list here. So okay. Okay. Could you, uh, could you explain the like sick leave exchange? Sure. Uh, it sick only involves four. Four of us. Four um, um, yeah. We have tiered contracts uh, depending on how long you've worked there. So. Uh, there's certain people, including myself, that have been there long enough to have worked under the older contracts where um, if you have uh, an excess, unused amount of sick time, uh, you're able to turn it back in at the value of, if you turn in five days, you get one day's pay. Um, so if you have all that extra time, you turn in five days, you get one day's pay. So it's uh, myself, Sergeant Lawrence, Mike uh, Tulo, and uh, Lieutenant Burr here. And those are, they're not in the new contracts. That's winding down. Correct. Mm -hmm. Yeah, there's there's some that have one level, some at a lower level, and some that have zero. Okay. Um, so. Chief Hutchinson, can you recap a little bit the replacement salaries? I think sure. the strategy would be that you really need to ramp up your hiring to replace the officers that are missing, and you think that'll take about a year. So we have ramped up the hiring, mm -hmm. but it takes that long. <laughs> so we we so board. we are at our staffing maximum in terms of hired. We can't add another body. We have so everybody's filled those slots is that they're in some way of that cycle of the 12 month period to onboard them okay so is the expectation that it'll probably fall in line with last year's replacement cost in the next budget cycle for 19 to uh, I wouldn't think it would be as high um, I'm hopeful um, but um, but as I said you know even though we might be full staffed everything from an injury um, right. to um, retirement to right. a, retirement. Yeah. We still predict. face attrition. Yeah, yeah. Yes. we're in the emergency business. Yeah, and yeah. we're you know, and I explained this in a presentation several months ago, um, 
as to why um, we're in the position we are in spite, and I think I kind of touched on it in the beginning, in spite of being fully staffed, I have seven people that are not on the road for me right now. Uh, they're being paid because they're at different various levels of being trained uh, or they have an off-duty issue that uh, makes them unavailable. Which is why we try each time to bring a lateral on because it cuts down that considerably and really makes it, what, essentially 12 weeks till we could onboard them. But it's it's just not working. I think I ask this question too each year, but and of course from year to year I forget the exact answer. But uh, do do you look at it each year and say, hey, maybe we need to add one more full time person who sort of floats to get replacement costs to be mitigated to some degree, so they're always covering these empty ships. Well, the floating part doesn't really work because of our collective bargaining agreement. Um, but uh, but we did, if you recall, last year add a body in the contract, a half year body that we're uh, we actually just made an offer to um, and they're they started the con the uh, Academy in December so that that's a half year that we got and the next year that's going to be a full year of that extra body to try and uh, so maybe, maybe to some degree you can do that we're hoping that we're hoping that gets us a little less behind okay yes. <laughs> um, but it's just the nature of of our of our business that you cannot replace people quickly um, yeah, understood. Yeah. And that's the hard thing to make sure people understand. I mean, it's not like we can just hire somebody tomorrow and get them to work. So it's, you know, it takes that that amount of time. Yeah, I'm hoping with the fire department now with more personnel because of the safer grant that they just received that maybe they're going to have more flexibility to cover replacement salary, replacement time. Yeah, I can't come up with the same yeah. question yeah, for that group as well. Yeah. And, and I won't. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> He's got the better answer. Uh, any other questions? Do we still have motorcycles? We have a motorcycle. It's not really been deployed. We have two officers that are uh, trained to, to operate it. The motorcycle is pretty old. We got that on a grant years ago. Um, we haven't deployed it for several reasons. Number one, uh, the officers that are qualified have since been promoted. And so to put a supervisor out on a motorcycle really doesn't make a lot of sense. Um, and we haven't uh, looked to uh, train anybody again because it's a special assignment and that pulls another person out of the, out of the uh, regular patrol well, ship. to go to the, you know, do we have the need for it? Or should we just move on? Um, it's not costing us anything right now. We own the motorcycle. Um, we'll use it once in a while for a uh, parade. It's, it's good for a parade detail. Um, because the motorcycle can get in and out where cars can't get. Um, it's so old, there's no value to it or anything. It just, uh, it just seems, you know, between having it sit there, mm -hmm. you, you know where I'm going. Yeah, no, I understand. Um, there's no need. And, and as I said, it doesn't doesn't cost us anything right now, other than as we're operating it, um, a little bit of maintenance. Um, the well, I'm just thinking the cost of, you know, uh, when you do use it for whatever reasons, uh, you know, I'm sure you have to have a special officer to ride, I'm sure. Right, there's only, Certain people said, there's can only ride two trained right now. And all of those kinds of things, and is it something, you know, if there's not a specific need, uh, you know where I'm going. It, it was a, it was a, it's ideal for traffic enforcement, and it's ideal for uh, those things that I described, like a parade or an event where you need to get in and around quickly. Um, we've obviously survived without it. Um, but it's there for us to use, and we've used it. We used it. We use it once in a while with the two officers that are already trained. If, the sar if there's an extra sergeant available, we'll put them out and have them do that. So you might use it a couple times a year. Correct. So it is. It's used. It's just not a regular vehicle. That Correct. You Correct. We haven't had a regular motorcycle patrol in several years. Again, primarily because of staffing. It takes it takes someone out of our regular rotation that I just talked about, and it would require replacement on a regular shift. Well, yeah, I'm not encouraging you using it. I'm just mm -hmm. wondering, you know, even just insurance. I mean, uh, mm -hmm. I, I know that we have packages and all of those kinds right. of things, but that's got to be you know, more expensive. Than yeah. that. Well, it, you know, it's something I can talk to the commission about and look at and see whether it makes sense for us to, to maintain it. And we'll, we'll do that. Yep. Good. I guess speaking of grants, do you anticipate there being any grants that you'd be applying for uh, that would offset? We have an annual grant for our body armor replacement, and we get 50% of that uh, every year when we replace that. So it's, uh, depending on the year, several thousand dollars. Um, as far as staffing grants uh, for police, there's very little out there yeah. right now. Um, 
most of the grants that are coming through for police are regionally based. That's why we're reaching out and trying to participate in more of these regional initiatives, so we'll get some benefit um, from these, uh, including the, that cyber group and the, um, uh, the SWAT team. That's where you get regional monies to help with that stuff. Um, whether it's equipment, um, personnel, again, not a whole lot. The, uh, the burn grant, which used to provide extra, it was the COPS grant, extra mm -hmm. bodies that's kind of been defunded over the last several, several years. Yeah. To the point of almost nowhere. So, maybe some five-year capital. Sure. Any questions? I, yeah, I, I just had. Yeah, I have a you question to too. It's, it's real quick. Which uh, the vehicle, the 1819 the, um, <coughs> patrol? Which patrol is being replaced for 1819? Yeah. Um, is it the? Is it 118? You, but you, uh, there's a few that are highlighted. Oh, I got you. But I don't know. I'm, I'm just curious which. Sure. I know it's based on mileage, but there's also one that's a 2010, and it says patrol. That's the ex that's the expedition. Yeah, I'm not. I'm not sure. I have three highlighted, which are cars seven, ten, and eleven. Yep. And there's one patrol marked for capital to be replaced. Um, oh no, that's just the total. That's the total cost. It's not one. It, it says one patrol, but that's uh, that's, that's a, that is that the cost for the three? That's actually two vehicles. I don't know why I have three highlighted. Um, it would be the two fourteens. Yeah, the two fourteens. Um, so ten and eleven. I adjusted that because we were able to get another vehicle this year. So um, in eighteen nineteen, there's only going to be two vehicles replaced. Um, so what I'll do is I'll get I'll I'll check those. Yeah, ten and eleven. Ten and eleven. Yeah, ten and eleven. Yeah. So seven. Scratch seven. I apologize for that. Seven just crossed the hundred thousand threshold. Right, it projected to. That was projected, but um, made a decision just to replace the 10 and 11 there. Okay. Um, so we dropped that back to two. Right. And so when you look at Patrol 62, that's, that's actually two, two vehicles. And okay. that's an all-in equipped cost, right? Yeah. No, the equipment is down yeah, below. Below, right? Yeah, yeah, that's yeah. just the cost of the vehicle itself. So thanks for pointing that out. Okay. No problem. Thank you. So my question is about vehicle replacement as well. Sure. Uh, you know, naturally you're replacing the, all the patrol cars and the various vehicles, but I think I saw a couple, and I don't have my notes in front of me, that were being replaced uh, as early as three or four years of use. Mm -hmm. And I can imagine you use them a lot, probably th around the clock, three shifts. Right. I'm kind of wondering, what kind of rule do you use to say, oh, it's time to replace a vehicle? Uh, we based it on a couple things. Number one, input from Public Works. Um, when we reach, traditionally, when we've reached about that 100,000 mile mark, Okay. Um, they're down more than they're than they're up. The cost to repair and keep them updated, they're off warranty. All the breakdowns are going to be covered by Public Works and our costs. So right at about a hundred thousand is where. Um, so mileage, kind of the primary. Oh yeah, about yeah. Because 000. with mileage comes hours. Because um, although there's a lot of mileage, they're also running the entire time. It's not just the mileage that's being uh, built up on them. Okay. Um, because they have to run to keep all the equipment inside them up and charged. All right, so and then uh, I did have one more question about one of the capital uh, projects. Uh, I think it was the new license plate reader. Mm -hmm. And uh, I was just curious, you know, out of some of the things you've asked for and proposed, if we maybe waited a year on that one, would that Well, be yeah, I can tell you more? this about the license plate readers. So we, we put in for one last year that was approved and one this year so that we would have two on our fleet. Um, as the year progressed, we had an opportunity and jumped on board to participate with the state police on a pilot project where um, they will actually run, purchase, and maintain the server for the data. Uh, and all we would need to do is purchase the, uh, the, the license plate reader itself um, at a, um, a cost that they've negotiated with uh, the vendor on. Um, we're hoping to get our first one again in this fiscal year um, within probably the next month or so. Um, so if we, we will already have one in place. If a decision is made to scratch one for next year, it's not going to. Okay. I mean, I think it's a really cool yeah. item for yeah. law enforcement, but, you know, yeah. if you could wait a year. For example, I'm, I'm one, reaching for things there's like There's multiple that applications it for it. I mean, it would have been real, you know, we sat there. It would have been real useful this weekend because we had people ID'd that we knew were coming to town, and we could have deployed that out there and known when they, uh, when they came past us. Oh, okay. um, so wow. you, can plug in a, you can plug in a plate and say and, and have it look for it. And if we know the route where they're coming and the route they're coming from, we can we can okay. do that. So I'm happy that, that it was supported last year, and we have the one that we're going to buy this year. 
um, if the one for next year comes out, comes out, we have at least one out there. Okay. Um, My head's rolling back to movies with like the APB and you're yeah. looking for the license plate. And right. It's kind of yeah. neat. Yeah. So it's it's a more than it's better than a set of eyes. So. Yeah. Yeah. So. John, did you have another question about the CAD software on that list of? Oh yeah. Yes. Uh, thank you. <laughs> thank you. Uh, it was just uh, a question about uh, some of the paperwork. I think in the summary, the CAD project was listed at an estimated fifty-three thousand. It's a contracted I, number contract. Okay, and then I dug into the details though, and I thought on one of the forms it's, it was a request for two hundred thousand. Is that uh, right? I'm trying to recall my no, question. The original, the original request. request was for two hundred, and then there was an agreement to have a, um, a, a, a tiered purchase over three years. Ah, okay. Instead yeah. of buying them all right out, we signed a lease. The, the vendor, oh. the vendor agreed on a three-year. That was the only disconnect. So I just yep. didn't I didn't get why the, the difference in the two right. two numbers. Okay. Thank you. Anything else? Thank you very much. Thank, thank you everybody. Thank you. Uh, we'll take a <laughs> take a quick vote break here. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> <laughs>